many people have suffered with English for so long that they worry there is no solution. Trained by schools to be passive, fear mistakes, and search for just one right answer, most English learners are stressed and frustrated. Some feel nearly hopeless. They have spent years in English classrooms. They have spent years memorizing grammar rules and vocabulary lists. They have spent years studying for exams, for exams such as TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, and etc. Despite all of this work and effort, most English learners are frustrated now. Many struggle with even simple conversations. Many feel nervous anytime they must speak English. They have memorized countless grammar rules, yet even simple conversation feel difficult. Likewise, despite years of study, most learners still cannot understand American TV or movies. So, after so many years of this traditional learning, students are now confused. When they try to speak, they constantly think about grammar and translations. First, they think of a sentence in their own language, then they translate it into English, then they think about the grammar, and finally they speak. When they listen, they go through a similar process. They hear the English, translate it into their own language, think of a response in their own language, and translate the response into English, you know, like, then think about the grammars to be sure that their respons response is correct. No wonder their speech is so slow and un un unnatural. No wonder English feels so stressful and difficult. But the real conversations are fast. It's nearly impossible to do all of this thinking fast, fast enough, especially when talking to a native speaker. If you think about translations and the grammar during a real conversation, you will quickly become lost. Instead of listening carefully to the other person, you will be translating your own response and trying to, to remember grammar. Your speech will be hesitant. And often the other person will become frustrated by your uh, lack of understanding. And of course, if you see the other person is, is, is losing patience, you will usually become even more nervous. It's terrible. It's a terrible downward spiral that most English learners know so well. But unfortunately, there is a solution. There is a way to escape the hidden curriculum. There is a road to English fluency, and you can travel on it. You can speak English powerfully. You can speak English clearly, naturally, and effortlessly. This solution, however, will require you to, to completely change your beliefs about education and completely change the way you learn English. And I call the system or the solution listening first approach system. And it has a two parts, the psychology and method. Most schools, most teachers, most uh, private language, English language courses, uh, they only focus on method. In other words, they, they, they solely focus on the, the pieces of the English language, vocabulary and the grammar. As we learned in, in my different videos that I shared with you, that grammar translation method, you know, or the communication activities added there is not useful. While schools are focused just on method, they completely ignore the first part of this listening first approach. And this is the psychology. Is it, the psychology is, the, is the, probably the most important element for success with English speaking. When you think of your own English speaking, you will realize that your nervousness, your lack of confidence, and your, your frustrations are the major problems. But how do you change this? Without an effective psychological system, you will struggle to find success with even the best language teaching method. Let's use a story to understand this uh, important part, these two important parts of this listening first approach system. Imagine that you are on the road and you are driving on the road to English fluency. What kind of car would you, would you want? Let's say that all you have to drive is an old, slow car that often breaks down. In addition, you will, you, you will fill this old car with the cheap gasoline. What kind of trip would you have? How fast you will go on this road to fluency? Most likely, your trip will be slow and frustrating with frequent you know, breakdowns. In fact, you probably will not reach your destination. Now. You could put some, you know, some quality gas in that old car, but even then, it will likely take you a long time to reach your destination. Better gas will help you a little, but the trip is still likely to be slow and frustrating. But now imagine that instead of that, you will driving a Formula One racing car on the road to fluency, and the car is made for speed and performance. 
and clearly it will go faster than the old slow car. But what if you fill it with a cheap, low quality fuel? There will likely be problems. Racing cars need racing fuel or they will not perform well. Obviously, the best situation will be to put high quality racing fuel into your Formula One racing car. And with this car and this fuel, your trip on the road to fluency will be, will be uh, you know, fast and exciting. This is how learning English works. If you've been studying for a while, you know by now that there are all sorts of systems, you know, like traditional classes at the universities, you know, private lessons from language schools, you know, online or some, I don't know, immersion programs that put you into the country where they speak the language that you're studying. In other words, you've got a lot of different cars to choose from. Some may be better than the others. Some may be faster, you know. But even the greatest of these methods, the Ferrari of language teaching, if you will, needs to make it work, you know. The method, after all, is only an engine, you know. If you don't give an engine the proper fuel, even a great one will not work the way that you would like it to. To succeed, you need both quality fuel and powerful engine. So right engine plus right fuel equals success. And obviously I believe the right engine would be the listening first approach system. What is the fuel? The fuel is psychology. It's the beliefs. Because your fuel is your motivation, your confidence, your energy, your enthusiasm. Like success psychology, you know, that's how we call it. You know, if, if your psychology is weak, even the best method will, will fail you. In other words, if you have connected stress, fear, frustration, nervousness, doubt, you know, if you, if you link it to the process of speaking English, you will have a lot of problems. And unfortunately, this is exactly what happens in most schools. The tests, the error corrections, the boring and ineffective methods used in, in schools combine to create a powerful negative emotions in, in most students. And after all, even if you are using the listening first approach, you must have strong psychology. Unless you bring this proper emotional energy to the language learning process, it won't be enough. Dr. Stephen Krashen, a linguist of University of Southern California and one of the top researchers on the second language learning, he says that he believes actually that negative emotions acts as a filter, reducing the amount of new language input that you are able to learn. As a result, students who feel bad, anxious, or worried, remembering less vocabulary, and don't speak as well. And essentially, they learn more slowly. So the best way to counter this crash and says is by keeping students interested, reducing the stress in classrooms, and boosting learners' confidence. In one study, researchers found that when they compared the performance of students who were energized and enjoying themselves in a class with the performance of the students who were just being drilled in material, the energized students did better. So the same was true when they tested the students again at, after like three or six months. Therefore, my friends, each and every time you study English, create a peak emotional state. Change your body, change your mental focus in order to create excitement and positive energy. Build a strong anchor, a strong connection between English and your most positive emotions. So basically, heal your English trauma.